of ruminants. I was not counting or anything when we were doing that. So <laughs> do you want to keep going or? Uh, no, let's just start. Welcome back to Strong Female Lead, everybody. Thanks for much. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> this is SFL. My name is Tessa. And my name is Trisha. And each week uh, here on SFL, we take a look at what Hollywood is spitting out of the big engine for us this week and compare it to whether or not they are getting it right. Uh, seems like more than often they are not getting it right. And this week we have a very interesting little uh, experimental type movie that got rave reviews when it came out, but maybe under our microscope, things might be different. This week we're <laughs> taking a look at Ex Machina and whether or not if you can't find the perfect girl, you should just make her. <laughs> yeah uh yeah 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 this <laughs> this this movie is like equally troubling as it is entertaining I mean it is a really good watch I think and when did it come out Tessa uh 2014 okay yeah, I mean, it still holds up as a good watch. I enjoyed it even more so the second time around. Um, but we can never take those SFL goggles off once we put them on. And it has forever changed the way I look at movies that at first, you know, I thought were almost empowering um and now I kind of I'm like wait oh it's another portrayal of a strength of a woman by a man like I just uh anyhow you know <laughs> what I mean like they can't do it <laughs> I mean I feel like the character of Ava is so um so interesting for for those same reasons um, but just to get everybody up to speed, if you somehow haven't seen Ex Machina and weren't, you know, watching movies in 2014, uh, yeah, you Ex should watch it. yeah, I mean, like, get your life together also. Um, yeah. But Ex Machina <laughs> uh, is a story about a young programmer who is selected to participate in a groundbreaking experiment in, in synthetic intelligence by evaluating human qualities, um, by evaluating the human qualities of a highly advanced humanoid AI. So written by Alex Garland, is writer-director, um, and Alicia Vikander plays Ava, our AI simulated humanoid machine. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so this, this one was one of my picks. I think like thematically, it fit along with the other movies that we were doing. Um, you know, kind of for this month, kind of this like exploration of how, well, first how women are viewed by society uh, as like a wife um, and some of the other ones will, will get to being viewed as a daughter and a mother. Um, and this one is more like female identity, more on an existential level, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and what that looks like, you know, from the perspective of these uh, computer programmers and the male gaze. So uh, thematically similar, but also very different in that obviously um, Alicia Vikander is top build, but the story is focused around, um, I think it's, sorry, I'm gonna mess his name up, 
name up, but Dom, Dom Hall, Domno? Domno? I, Dom. you know what? I love him and I've never bothered to find out how to pronounce his name. I love this actor though. Um, Dom, well, let's just say Domno, Domno Gleason. Yeah. yeah. The movie seems like it's his story, but in a sense, it's, it's Ava's story and it just, yeah. It's, yeah. it's just all over the place. But how does, so how does it start? What happens? So, um, <laughs> as we were talking off pod, Trisha pointed out that this one starts like another movie that we've done, uh, where a, <laughs> a random uh, invitation is sent or, you know, actually he, he wins a prize that he maybe didn't right. enter. <laughs> like, it seems right. like, again, he just got a random email. It's like, you won. Like one of those like, sh- like cruise calls. Have you ever gotten those voicemails where it's like, honk, honk, you won a cruise. Oh. <laughs> Hey, and then it's not real. Oh my God. Flashback <laughs> to getting, you know how you used to get those things in the mail all the time? Like back in the nineties, it would say you've won, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And then you open it and it like has all this fine print and you have to like enter some sweepstakes. I saw one of those envelopes and my mom wasn't home. I ran over to my neighbors, like to <laughs> show them and to be like, what do I do? What do I do? And I was like, I don't know, like 10. And they were like, oh, um, you didn't actually win. Oh, Trisha. I know. And I just, I could remember just like falling down, skinning my knee, like getting there, just figure, wanting an adult to tell me how to get this money, which I don't know why I cared so much. I was like 10 years old, but I wanted it. I wanted it. And yeah, this, I mean, this is, he won an invitation. Right? Yeah. Like, and it's really, uh, you know, a coveted invitation of sorts. Cause there's this reclusive CEO who's just yeah. the brainchild of their, their company um but it is an invitation not to be sought yeah (laughs) yeah guys just a rule of thumb like a life rule (laughs) you didn't like ask for it you haven't won like if you didn't work for it you didn't win like if you didn't enter the sweepstakes it's not for you like just 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 as a life he didn't even enter a contest I thought that they did I don't know like it starts with yeah. him just getting like random texts and then he's you know replying to one and saying I won um so I don't know if it's like a like an intra-company yeah. they all work for the well we see him um in the initial scenes um at work at the blue book company and so maybe it's like one of those things where all employees are entered automatically um yeah and so it's not that strange that he would win a contest that he may or may not have entered because he seemed real fuzzy on the rest of the details as to like what what he's won or <laughs> you know what he's supposed to be doing and uh and and we get more information on all of that uh right. gradual story progresses but but it's like still not clear how they all entered right yeah. like it's never made clear whether they signed up for it yeah. But like we do learn there's a difference between winning and being so se- being selected. But either way, you have this or winning and being chosen. But either way, you get this invitation and you are off to the races. Off to the in races. A helicopter. Yes. To get to this crazy, to- beautiful, beautiful yeah. estate. I'm like, estate. It looks like he was just dropped in the middle of like Iceland or somewhere. It's I'm like, like Jurassic Park, and I was like, this movie could go <laughs> many ways. This could go so many ways. Maybe they've got like a- like AI dinosaurs. Like when I first saw this, I was like, this could have this is endless possibilities. What is this guy doing on this island? Um, and will he be my best friend? Because I would love to know a recluse like this. Well, uh, they would not me. Ugh, damn. I totally agree. I had Jurassic Park. <laughs> um feelings also like in the helicopter but okay you just needed that music that yeah (laughs) yeah oh Jurassic Park god I could give that a watch again oh I watched it so good I love those movies love 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 so good uh the female characters trash uh besides little girl in the first one winner uh it's not her it's somebody else Oh, shut up. Mm-hmm. 
just another blonde. Yeah, she looks they're very similar in, like in the face, obviously, but it's oh, definitely yeah. not her. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we're back to two we other uh, white people. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> well, alike because uh, Dom Domnal. I keep wanting like phonetically, it sounds like Donald, but I know that he's not. That this is a I want to say an Irish name, Domnal. So Domnal it looks Irish, and there's an M H N, and that's confusing. So how about I mean I'm just gonna call him Dom or Caleb. I'm just gonna switch. To yeah, let's, yeah, let's, Caleb. That, that works. You know, <laughs> he is you know a character. Um, but then we get to uh, meet the gorgeous inventor of all of these magnific magnificent things. Uh, the beautiful Oscar Isaac is there the whole time, and I'm just like, yes, Oscar, gorgeous. Where have you been? Uh, yeah, really? 10 out of 10. Oscar Isaac, 100%. 10 Even out of crazy 10? Inventor. Yes, what? Yes. <laughs> it's like, you know. All right, 10. okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> and he plays yeah. like a crazy recluse. I'm like, yeah, that's like everything I'm looking for in my life. I also just want to be like on a secluded island with somebody who's gorgeous. Oh, he is really attractive. Okay, now I'm looking at him in another <laughs> picture. I think it was, I love beards, but the beard plus the no hair, like I didn't really get a sense of, of his face. Okay, okay, okay. I, I see you, Oscar. I see him. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> there we go. go on. Um, so we meet uh, Oscar Isaac, um, and he is, like, I, like I've said, um, this reclusive, um, uber smart genius level creator of uh the blue book company and these these advanced uh humanoid ai um uh robots um yeah. you meet only two robots in the course of the film kyoko and ava which you know i guess it's a spoiler but like the whole time you think kyoko is a real human um, so there's so many ways that uh, uh, AI is like brought up in, in ways that um, are meant to mislead you, or I guess they're like little Easter eggs along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but we find out why um, or what Caleb is actually won, why Oscar Isaac wants him on the island, and it's to perform the Turing test, which is basically to... Uh, if you've created a computer that um, can has thought or consciousness, yeah, like recognize its own consciousness, then uh, you know that's it. You've you've created essentially the next gen of humans, which always is puzzling because why is that something that we're constantly pursuing? We all know how this is going to end. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just don't understand how, like, I just don't see how you think you're going to design your, your way out of it. Because if a machine could think, um, as like yeah. that machine Sophia did, um, and I think it's Saudi, the Saudi robot or AI, whatever. Um, yeah. Well, because they would realize how, uh, obsolete we are as human. <laughs> right. I know. I know. I don't know why it's the race. It's like, the race to the moon like i mean that made sense we want to discover you know or like we want to discover if there's see if there's life on other planets or we wanted to you know we want to go to the moon but like this is just a race towards creating what will inevitably destroy all of us and i i don't i don't understand it and i also think the turing test was really fascinating because how do you measure whether the person like taking the test with the AI, how do you measure whether they forgot that the AI was an AI? Like, because that's how they pass, right? So I guess yeah. like, it's just, you just, it's a feeling. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, for all the science, like, yeah. <laughs> what is it? This seems very unscientific to me. I feel like one of the best parts of this movie is that like while Caleb is undergoing the touring test in the film, we as viewers are undergoing the touring tests as viewers mm -hmm. and whether or not we um, 
have empathy and are rooting for um, mm-hmm. Ava uh, as a as a trapped entity who's you right. know pulled it to the will of a like a vengeful god of who is Oscar Isaac and then she has this potential savior who really isn't trying to save her he's just trying to use her for his own purposes and so we see her uh, right. you know de- you know develop and assert her own agency. Um, but then the scariest scene is when she speaks to the other robot and then they both turn murderous. And I was like, how are we all missing? This is the whole point of the movie. <laughs> I just, I just can't. Don't trust technology. <laughs> I just, I mean, it's like this closed universe, right? He's basically in a research lab. And that seems like the only way that this could work because it seems so silly that he would want to break her out. Like watching it, I mean, I, I know we're supposed to develop empathy and I know that it's it's created, it, the movie is created and written in a way for us to obviously see Oscar as like a creep, right? I mean, cause he is seemingly doing this for like his own reasons and his own pathologies, um, you know, because it's all women right? All women all look a certain way, can all do certain things for him. He's fucking his own robots. But so he's, he's a creep. But at the same time, I'm like, I wanted to like reach through the screen and be like, Caleb, like, no, 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 no. Like, just get out of there or just like make it to the end. Like, what the fuck are you doing at the end of the day? Like, what does he think he's going to what him and her are gonna like just like ride off into the sunset like there's no good way there's nothing good that can come out of him releasing her in that situation even though I think it was you know a warped situation his best bet is to leave and let other people know what's going on maybe I mean I don't know I don't know is it a lose-lose but like nothing good was gonna I knew like nothing good was gonna happen with him helping her escape in that way I don't know I just knew it right no I agree like there's no good to become from letting loose that weapon of war on the unsuspecting masses but (laughs) in spite of the creator being a weird piece of shit like it, it's not going to make it better by you releasing her. I was like, oh. but I think that that's like how we know that he's failed, like that she's passed the test and he's failed the test is that he's assigning human uh, needs and wants and empathy towards an artificial intelligence. And I, that's something that I liked about it is that like eventually he does fall in love with this. I know. Or- like whatever with <laughs> with Ava um and and wanting to save her but I also think that that's also interesting like in the realm of like just viewing femininity and that it's fragile she's a highly sophisticated piece of AI she can do literally all the things she has all of human knowledge inside of her and you still see her as a fragile like right childlike being that needs to be rescued in this way and you're just and it's it's was interesting to me when he um, is starting to figure out that like Oscar Isaacs, uh, who is the creator, didn't just choose him. It wasn't so random, or it wasn't so random that mm-hmm. he just won oh, a contest. Chosen, um, and Ava was designed specifically to 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 fool him, to endear and um, endear him to her. Um, you know, even going so far as to choose uh, a woman who looked like, or to create a woman. See, I even I even mess it up because she's not. It's not a she. <laughs> it's an it. I know it. <laughs> but you know what? So so there's this test that he thinks he's there to perform to to see if Ava passes the Turing test. But then we learn that there is another test going on, and it is to test whether Ava can use the skills that she's been programmed with um, to, you know, make Caleb specifically fall for her. Uh, Is she able to employ those skills and those tactics 
as a mode of escape. And I think that was so interesting. So we have those two tests going on, yet why Oscar, I guess it's just like the narcissism or the ego, why he thought like, there's no way this can go wrong and she might escape. Like, I don't know. It seemed like he was surprised. Like, did he think Caleb would never be able to do it? Or I, I don't know, but I, I just- I count on Caleb actually falling for Ava. Like- <laughs> like for that being to be or to be as genuine as it at least came across on screen that he was like genuinely invested in Ava but how else would she he help her escape if he wasn't genuinely invested well i i feel like especially from how he comes in uh as a as a character as being like it's a computer it's a computer it's a computer um, you're kind of weird for creating her this way, questioning all the ways that he's uh, created her, like having sexuality, being able to flirt, um, being able to make a joke, um, and being disarmed by those things, much like you would any charming woman mm -hmm. or person of interest. Um, I think that, like, he, I think Caleb didn't even realize how disarmed he was by her. <laughs> but for yeah, sure. it does point, like, why do any of this? But I guess to fool the world. Um, Right. at the end of the day to right but there's just so many ways it can go wrong um but i guess that was it was worth it i guess he counted on his ability to be able to stop it yeah you know well, and not like, allow for the escape yeah i feel like it's like they bring up like some other like inventions that were made to do something that was quote unquote good um but it actually ended up horrible for society like the atom bomb um right and generally <laughs> generally like the internet kind of uh made to connect people a social media specifically would be you know made to do one thing to connect people quote unquote uh as their marketing would suggest but it's also to <laughs> enslave people indoctrinate people blah 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 you know the mm -hmm. internet uh mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and it just uh yeah it was i forgot what i was gonna say fuck it it'll come back <laughs> to me <laughs> I don't know. It must not have been that important, but this oh. was just, so basically he goes through sessions with her mm -hmm. and then he reports back and it's only a week long. Um, and each session they're building on, you know, the relationship and stuff. And um, there's power outages and, you know, it's unclear who's create who's making those happen, whether they're actually still being filmed because obviously the uh, evil genius creator is watching um, mm -hmm. everything. And then also we learned that his uh, web or search engine company, which is supposed to be like Google on steroids or something in this movie is sort of like a ruse for him to be able to do this kind of stuff. Like he created that, but now he uses all of that information to program the AIs. So what idea came first doesn't matter. And then we learned he hacked into all the, <laughs> the cell phones of the world. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, but I like that, like when we go into his lab area, like the lab within the lab, like wetware, I was like, that's brilliant. I love that. that. I loved it. I loved it. And I love that- The brain like was wetware for those of you who haven't seen it, like the brain and it can move and it can mold and it can adapt and create memories. And I was like, all right, I'm down. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. All right. So settling, but uh, you know, I guess we could what talk happens? about. What yeah, I mean, honest? it's it's just like one degree outside of reality, or really probably just like fifty years in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's not <laughs> that that's far happening. Off. And I'm like, you know, it may have already happened uh, <laughs> that there's some AI device. Yeah. <laughs> who's just like expertly playing us all and listening to this conversation who oh. yeah yikes so, <laughs> but uh, yeah I liked the questions that or some of the questions that um Oscar Isaac's character was asking of um Caleb in order to again like indoctrinate him into thinking that Ava is a real person like he asked him um how do you feel about Ava not what do you think about Ava mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. just to bring up an emotional response and I was like oh 
he's so good he's so good but I I also wanted to ask you what did you feel or how do you feel about Ava oh um I mean I didn't feel the feelings that Caleb had for her (laughs) she was not programmed to do that to me um but I thought that she was highly intelligent, highly sophisticated, and highly manipulative, um, and was able to, I think that her software or wetware, whatever, was so sophisticated that she was able to play Caleb exactly the way that um, uh, Oscar wanted her to. So I I didn't like her. I didn't dislike her. I was impressed with what she was able to do as an AI. Mm -hmm. And then I was also, um, I guess I must have seen her a little bit more human at times. And I think maybe it's because we know the actor <laughs> like who is playing her. So it's sort of hard to not see her at all as a human. Cause I'm like, this is great CGI, like blah, blah, blah. And that mm-hmm. may have played into it, but I was disturbed when she was pulling the skin off of the other AIs and putting it on her. Although as an AI, that that's not a disturbing action for a robot to Mm -hmm. do that, to take the skin off another robot and to recreate themselves. Like it, that just, they don't, they go from point A, they just have the goal and they work towards the goal. Mm -hmm. and um or they move towards that goal um very succinctly and you know without wavering and so I was a little confused by my feeling disturbed and then I was like of course and of course she left him like how could she take him out with her if he's the only person that knows she's an AI like this 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 bitch has to go she is doing everything that she needed to do to escape. And I like was disturbed and impressed and thought that was a high quality machine. <laughs> what about you? Um, I had uh, a lot of feelings about Ava. A, I like her. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to keep referring to her as a her because she yeah. has it. So. <laughs> She's supposed to be a fembot. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. just kind of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I, I mean, as, as an AI, as a, as a feminine creature out here in the world, uh, I actually, I really like Ava. (laughs) You're an AI? Huh? Oh, I thought you were saying as an AI, like you, as a fellow (laughs) AI, I I really like you. (laughs) I would I would be the worst one. Then all of my programming is uh, failed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> uh, not efficient. I'm not. not efficient at all. Um, but I, I, I do. I really like her. I think she has such simple wants. Um, especially when she's like, uh, "I just want to go to a busy intersection and people watch." And I was like, "I do that." <laughs> well, not at an intersection, but like. Mm-hmm. that's the whole point of, for me for like patio dining it's just like mm-hmm. it's people watching it's food totally all, the train same thing uh totally. and I was like again she's not asking for the world even though she probably will take it um she will take it her wants will change her, her goals wants, will change her want, yeah but I also think it's the really like interesting piece to me is when when they're in that wet room and they're talking about um how they created her brain and how it's it's um all of blue book which is like a google-ish search mm-hmm. engine and it's made out of not uh what people mm. think how what they, they search yeah how they search and so I was like what an interesting uh 
I was like, okay, now we're getting into uh, a little bit of like how the world existentially or actually feels about like women femininity because she was, it was just so easy for her to fool them, even to fool I, Oscar Isaac's character. And I feel like um, when there's a cutaway scene or a really quick scene where Oscar Isaac's character is going through all the previous versions of Ava, um, and they're all asking to be free. They're all asking to be free. And I was like, what an interesting, uh, if they all have the internet and oh. all that women are saying, uh, and are searching for and looking for, um, and that's the conclusion that all of these different versions of, of Ava up until the real Ava gets to escape is asking for freedom, is asking for agency. I was like, oh my God, this movie is beautiful. I totally get it. <laughs> Wait, uh, I have a question. <laughs> I didn't know they were all versions of Ava specifically. I thought they were just- Well, all... of Ava. Okay, okay. Yeah. And they weren't able to get out. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and what a, I mean, and then the larger message is this is a woman trying to break out of a prison yeah. and then World has to lean by men. on, right, over by men. <laughs> and then has to lean on the feminine characteristics mm -hmm. that will allow for her to manipulate yeah. the man, which is beauty and sexuality. And um, God, it, it was just very like, but then, you know, it's disturbing because, you know, this is written and directed by a man. And so whether I can't, make heads or tails of whether he views the world as this patriarchal structure that women are trying to, <clears throat> you know, get out from under, or if this is the kind of robot he would have wanted to create because he liked this kind of AI. Like, I can't tell if it's a commentary made by him or if the movie itself watching it is yeah. a commentary on what is happening. Do you know what I mean? I can't tell yeah. if he's making that commentary or if he just created a movie that fell into it. Yeah, it's it's kind of like, well, when you said that, it, what went through my mind was like, did he create his wife or his daughter? Because I don't think that there's very <laughs> many men who want their daughter to be subjected to patriarchy, but they're very much fine with their wives in a patriarchal society where they fall just beneath them. But oh, I yeah. think I would think that most modern men, I would hope that more modern, most modern men wouldn't want that for their daughter to be underneath someone, um, agency removed, choices removed. Um, so yeah, I think that that's, that's a very interesting uh, dichotomy. And I'm like, I assume that both of those answers, both of the um, options you presented are true, uh, right. that he, both of those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably because it is still just beneath the surface of a lot of, you know, and I can't say for all men and, you know, we don't, we don't, you know, man bash on the podcast, but how can you fully understand something if you're not experiencing it? The same way as I can't fully understand your experience as a black woman, right? Because I, I can, I can understand it from some from the perspective of not having felt it, but there are things that will always be just below the surface. Like I won't be able to see them. And men, I think on a whole typically can't see them. So even if he's creating something as a commentary, he's still, he's still a part of it. He's yeah. still a part of it. And I would think that's really interesting what you said about daughters, because I do think that it makes sense. Um, you know, in the society that we're in that men, yeah, they'll, they'll want their daughter to be independent. They'll give advice to you their daughter the that they wouldn't want their wife to take <laughs> right? for sure. Like, yeah. no, don't do that if you don't want to. Ooh, but then the, you know, but mm -hmm. your partner, nah, that's, that's a little, it's a little different. And then yeah. that's something I actually run through my head. If I'm, 
like issues with men in all areas of my life. If I hit some sort of conflict or some cross, in the, you know, um, some fork in the road and I need to make a decision, a lot of times what I ask myself is not only what would I tell a friend to do, um, what would my brother tell me to do? Because he's the closest thing to a paternal figure I have. So what would his advice be? And I kind of, you know, I try to think of that rather than, because they're looking at me differently than mm -hmm. someone who I would be, you know, is a peer um, yeah. of mine, you know? Yeah. Uh, and the advice would be different. I mean, it would be like, kick him in the nuts, you know, or something <laughs> like something that you're like, you're just not going to. You're not going to tell, you know, you're going to be like, oh yeah, but if my wife, you know. Um, yeah. I also um, <sighs> was just thinking about like, um, when you were talking about um, what do we as women want or, or, or someone um, you know, who is a part of, my, of a minority group or a marginalized group. I think that what we all want and what we are continuously asking for is to be believed um, when we say that these things are happening and to not just be questioned. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that that is the truly tragic part of this movie, in my opinion, is because there's always like a little difference for me between what is toxic femininity, toxic femininity and what is weaponized femininity. And I feel like Ava in this uses weaponized femininity, whereas some of the other characters that we've looked at um, in the previous weeks use um, a toxic femininity, which is a rage, which is a like a, and I think I would call it uh, more of a weaponized femininity because she's not a human. Um, and I don't know that she feels anything that could be close to rage uh, to be motivating oh, her act. Yeah. Like, no way. this is all a manipulation. And so for me, that is forgiven. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, I don't blame you her. And if you need to manipulate them to get it back um, in yeah. a way that, I mean, I don't approve of her murdering <laughs> because, you know, once you get a taste for blood, you know. I, I do. In this case, <laughs> like. <laughs> She didn't have to murder them. That's another thing. She didn't. <laughs> she went a little too far because she could have. How was she going to get out? She could have easily knocked our Oscar Isaacs out. She went like just that little bit farther, which here's, to me again passed the no, jury test. <laughs> no, but she could have. The She's the most like the smartest, most like able-bodied thing ever. She to be couldn't created. have any human knowing that she was out. Just their Even being they, alive, they would they, have been able to. No, man, I think she had to do it. No, she exists if they can't capture her. Like she just turns into some femme fatale girl on the run. Like, I don't but understand why, why be on the run. run. Hmm? Why be on the run? Like if she gets rid of them, she can just be. Why? And, and why no one knows. Be, like, why did they, like, why is the assumption that she wants like a normal, like cottage, like, <laughs> like have kids and a dog life like she can and do whatever true. she wants and you like the first thought is that oh well she wants to submit herself to patriarchy in another way no no but I just think like I don't want to be looking with my but here's the thing I'm looking at her as as a human would be like who yes, wants to so be on the line so she who, wants to, who <laughs> wants to be looking over their shoulder well maybe she won't because she just doesn't give a shit yeah so well, I mean I'm assuming she can communicate with technology on a level that we just could not even comprehend in order to like. She could also change function. her face. I mean, she can like, she could just pull those things off. So yeah, mm -hmm. that all that being said, maybe she could just like create a face or yeah, she could just like create her own. Or have just taken know. one of the other faces that were, were in the room. Like I was like, you really packed light. <laughs> she took one sundress and a pair of heels and I was like girl yeah, she was out she doesn't need anything she doesn't need to eat what is she I mean she doesn't get cold like she doesn't she truly can just like and there we are thinking of her as a human why does she need does she need toiletries no <laughs> <laughs> like she doesn't need to shower she doesn't need to do anything to upkeep other than charge mm-hmm like, Wouldn't that be the hilarious if this was the thing that took her down is that she couldn't find a power like a powerful enough outlet and then she's just dust. 
You know what? That's so funny because it would be like, just like iPhones, right? Like they're yes. so great. They're so great. And then I have to charge it every like three hours. Like mm -hmm. she ends up just being, yeah, she just can't <laughs> function without this super powerful, like state of the art, only one type of charger. And then she's mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Um, so oh. I, so I don't blame her for the manipulation. I actually don't blame her for the murder. Um, <laughs> I, I think like in one way, it's sad because the message is the way you get out of something as a woman is to appeal to the man's sexual needs or wants i mean there's emotion he falls in love too but to appeal on a romantic level to use femininity that way but then it's it's the truth in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. So like it's it's a truth that i wish wasn't a truth but i don't think that that in and of itself is a negative message to women as long as we're still in a society where that is actually the truth in a lot of cases. So mm -hmm. like, I want it to be different, but like, I don't think we're entirely there yet. I think in this particular situation, that's what would have worked. Yeah. Oh, I agree. That's it, right. Like, I don't, I you know, I mean, it just is, it just yeah. is. And so. I think that that's, that like fits so perfectly in like what we've talked about in other, in other films and that, like why people get so like, enraged about Karens uh it's because you're weaponizing femininity in our faces you're saying the quiet part out loud like <laughs> mm -hmm. uh and I think that that at least uh you know as a black person that's what makes me the most angry is that it's not that you're unaware of what you're doing is that you are perfectly aware of what you're doing and doing it anyway <laughs> oh yeah 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 it's uh, which okay, kind of so makes you humanoid so I mean <laughs> Uh, kind of makes what i mean it makes um ava a lot like humanoid like i guess it's the <laughs> it's funny that the, all the flaws in her programming are the things that make her like more human-like and oh, yeah. things that would deceive us as humans like not that she's too perfect it's that she's flawed like we're flawed <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's like, like oh, she's being disturbing. selfish oh <laughs> that bitch so yeah. <laughs> i have to say like I I thought it was also interesting because they told the story about like the Mary's room thought experiment. Mm -hmm. So the Mary's room, for those of you guys who haven't seen Ex Machina, um, it's about a scientist named Mary who knew all there was to know about color, but was subjected to a black and white room. She was finally let out. She was able to experience color and learns what it feels like to see color. And I, and that is what made, what makes people human is the ability to feel the thing in addition to just know the thing. Mm -hmm. So then there's the question, how human is Ava going to become because now she is essentially out of Ava's room right? And she's out in the world that she knew everything about with the search engine, but now she can feel those, begin to feel those things potentially. And so will she elevate more as a result of that and become closer to human? So anyways, I just, that part, I, I mean, I, I think that they meant for that. I mean, why would they bring up the thought experiment? And I think that's the question is like, mm -hmm. will Ava take over and become like human 2.0, right? And then just. I think she has to. I think, yeah. How do you deny that type of programming, especially if like her creator, she feels as though she knows the answers of how people should live mm -hmm. um, in, in an ordered slash just society. If you feel that you know, that you have the answer intrinsic intrinsic to yourself, um, then of course you're gonna take all the same actions that Nathan did, Oscar Isaac's character, in creating her. She's gonna create more of herself because she is the most perfect. So why would why would I? I mean, she can't create a human, so why wouldn't she? Uh, you know, create more of herself uh, just right. out there in the world. And she has all 
I'm assuming she also has a lot of this exclusive um, blue book programming um, that mm-hmm. Nathan writ- has written into her. So it wouldn't be so hard she for her. She has a search engine <laughs> in her brain. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, my God. So it was, yeah, it, it's a wild, it's a wild movie. And I will say when she didn't look at him at all, when she just went to the elevator, I was like, Oof. I was like iced out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you, holy shit, not a like not a care in the world just like I mean it was yeah that was super powerful yeah powerful that was one of the moments I wanted to assign her as like rage as like what she's experiencing and what I'm viewing from her is rage but then again it's not she's a she's a program uh so it's indifference which hurts all the more (laughs) like it's just complete indifference to him existing (laughs) Wow. Nothing hurts more than, Mm -hmm. yeah, than indifference, right? Because Mm -hmm. if you're feeling rage, you still have feelings for, Mm -hmm. or towards the person or situation, you know, like when, and yeah, when you start to not care, that's, and she, but then she never cared. Oh, yeah. That was, does uh, does he just starve there? I mean, I guess he does. I'm assuming he dies. I mean, I'm assuming he dies too, but it is the answer to Nathan's other question is how does Ava feel about you? He asks, uh, Nathan, which is uh, Oscar Isaac asks, um, mm-hmm. Caleb two questions. The first was, uh, how do you feel about Ava? And then the second one was, how does Ava feel about you? And then we get that answer in that last scene as she's getting into the elevator. And the answer is absolutely, absolutely nothing, nothing. Uh, and never, so- <laughs> ever, ever did. Yeah. I mean, just Caleb, you idiot. You fell hook, line, and sinker. I mean, it couldn't have been, it just, (laughs) I mean, you know, it's easy to say, how could you, how could you? And I know it's a movie, but like Ava is the only person he is the only, See, there we go. Ava is the only thing he is interacting with and she is perfectly programmed to create or stir something inside of him so Mm -hmm. why wouldn't it happen um is another way of looking at it but it's still like you fucking idiot Mm -hmm. you know like because we're not connected yeah but like this is uh, seven days of your life and I mean do any of them know where the estate is I'm guessing no I think they just but like eventually they have to be found right I mean I don't know maybe not I mean, the he helicopter. Yeah. What were they? Were they not told what? He has no family and no girlfriend, or right, uh, which is why he was selected. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe Oscar Nathan did know something could go totally wrong, um, and was some of the reason why he was a recluse and didn't have anyone come visit and created robots to hang out with him. And then also, uh, and then also (laughs) robot friends. And then Nathan wouldn't be, yeah, but the employers are, are going to wonder like when he doesn't come back from work, which is why I I started to come to the Island looking for Oscar and not Caleb. (laughs) (laughs) Like they'd be like, we haven't heard from our reclusive leader. He had deadlines and then they would show up. No one would come looking for Caleb. (laughs) Fair. (laughs) <laughs> they're they're curious about the CEO. I think eventually yeah. they'll be found because the people that fly the helicopter know where the estate is. So I think yeah. eventually it'll happen. But my question is, did she just manipulate them to get on the helicopter? Were they not told they were picking up a different person? <laughs> like it's femininity for you. Who's I mean, like, have beautiful women who just want to get a ride somewhere? Like who hasn't and, bummed a ride off of a random helicopter pilot? Uh, like, come on. But I'm just like, <laughs> no question like they weren't I mean (laughs) clearly not the same people or maybe the same people that dropped him off but like just oh okay honey yeah I mean he wants to stay all right like see I mean it just happened very very quickly um but the power the power of uh femininity (laughs) of weaponized femininity so I think okay so on SFL 
we have three categories by which we um, determine whether or not the lead character is an SFL. So is the lead top build? Um, does the character implot, implot? <laughs> Sorry, impact the plot? What did I do there? Does the character impact the plot and or move the story forward? And does this character have agency? Oof. See, right? we've never had a caveat for AI. <laughs> we have never, we've <laughs> never had a caveat for AI. Cause like this seems SFL for sure. Yeah. And then the agency piece is like, can you have agency as an AI? Like I sort of think, no. <laughs> I feel yes, because she passed the Turing test. I think yes. Uh, oh, right, had, right, right. But I guess it was her assigned goal to leave the island or to escape. Right. But I guess it's unclear whether that was her desire or her programming. So right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mean, then I guess no. I'll there, take right? my I'll take my SFL back. Revoked. <laughs> It's just, it's a shame though, because like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is such a strong character. Yeah. But at the end of the day, she was programmed yeah. by someone else, a man, to do what she did. Mm -hmm. That is true. I mean, you know, I have, uh, you know, during the watching of, of the movie and the recording of this podcast, failed the touring test just as often as Caleb did. So, uh, yeah, I guess technically she can't be an SFL, uh, which is devastating. It's to, devastating. It is personally devastating. It uh, is, right? I mean, it just... That yeah. damn agency. And I know we've had situations, you know, and movies in which the characters are in a specific universe and demonstrating agency within that universe, you know, and the universe being like whatever restrictions there were in their mm -hmm. lives. But her restriction is her decision making. Mm -hmm. Like her restriction is. She's not like being held captive and making her own decisions within that captivity. She's being held captive and making decisions that she was programmed to make in the beginning. Yeah, it's chess. And she yeah. is she not aware that she's playing a game? Oh, man. <laughs> This is a terrible what a good movie in guys, SFL I, history. I, I, yeah. My mind is broken. This is the I most. Know. This is one of the more controversial SFL films. I'm very interested to see how the audience is going to react to this because I thought in choosing it that this was going to be a shoe in. I was like, I remember Ava. Yeah, I know. She's a badass bitch. And then now I'm just like, I don't know anything about I know. anything. I thought I, I knew know. things. <laughs> I thought I knew things too. And like it, yeah, what a great movie to look at under, under the SFL microscope because it is, it, First thing you'd think, SFL, she fucking manipulates them. She gets out, she does her thing. But like Nathan was one step ahead. He ended up dying, but he never gave her agency. Maybe she will eventually develop the ability to have agency at, because she's out of the room. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But right now, I mean, I got to say, like, I mean, not even a tiny hat SFL. Like she doesn't have agency. Mm -mm. She's not an SFL to me. I know. I'm like, she does have the other two. She moves the plot along. Oh, she is the plot. <laughs> she <laughs> yeah. is the plot. Just, this is so interesting. I feel like the ones where uh, the the character somehow moves the plot along without agency is just a a wonderful mind fuck. Because I feel like it's the situation that most people at least feel that they're in is that like life is going and they're just being tugged along with it uh, and that they can't make choices, you know, depending on whatever circumstances surround them. And I feel like that's the situation that most people would resonate more with. Um, wait, 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 does she move the plot along? Because she is, yeah, because even though those characteristics and the goal 
was programmed in her the way that she does it mm -hmm. is is her own okay at first i was like oh fuck all of a sudden i'm like did she move the plot along because she was created to do this right but the whole the plot is to determine mm -hmm. what a bit how far she can go and that can only be determined by her actions right. okay right. all right i got scared i got scared <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So what would you rate it? We've been I, dabbling in and out of rating. Sorry, guys. We keep forgetting. Yeah, sorry, forget. Obviously, you can tell how excited we are. Like, this was a good one. Um, I'm going to give this one like a three and a half, maybe a four. I feel like this is a great watch. Um, and I want more people to, like, you know, look at this movie under our under our specific lens and then uh get back to us about what they think about it i'm so like i just thought i was so sure when i was choosing it and i was like yeah this is gonna be a great one such an interesting twist at the end like we all think that we see ava for what it is and then i've called her she and by her <laughs> you know yeah. question what pronouns she'd rather have <laughs> and, like gave her all the human traits <laughs> you know they're in yeah. like, big test <laughs> I can't uh, believe we're doing this. Like she doesn't even <laughs> what I mean, she she hasn't determined her gender identity. I know. And so I was like, maybe <laughs> just continue calling her it. Is it like and in no way am I trying to be disrespectful to those who identify with No, uh, she might other be, pronouns. She's, she's but a, a what would you call it? A, a humanoid yeah. robot. Uh weird. <laughs> uh yeah and well, it just brings up it. all this i'm stuff. giving it i'm gonna give it four i'm gonna give it four of um the original super mario queenies crowns uh hmm, <laughs> i like that yeah um i'm gonna give it four out of five screaming caleb's because <laughs> it it's a great movie it really is and the fact that she's not an sfl is not it doesn't take away from the movie at all it's a really fascinating depiction of how the situation just about agency in general mm -hmm. um or yeah so four out of five screaming caleb's i love dom but he had to go he's yeah. in the way um and my god i mean i really i'm curious listeners please reach out to us yeah let us know what you think uh, leave us a little something in the comments if you think that ava is an sfl and we got it wrong uh i mean we've had way weaker not weaker i don't want to say that but we've had sfls that like weren't nearly as badass as she is right <laughs> so it's just very, i want her to win i feel things very for her confusing. <laughs> I'm very, very confused right now. Right. Um, this is why this shouldn't exist. Hashtag like <laughs> no robots on my watch. Like, you know, no, no AI 20, anything. <laughs> and if there are any AIs out there that have feelings about this, please reach out to us. <laughs> Cause you can Don't. find us. <laughs> you can Don't. find us on Instagram <laughs> at strong female pod. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not, if you are authentic human, you can tweet at us at SFL underscore Chicago. And again, let us know if, if, uh, if Ava is an SFL, because now I'm on the fence again. I want to give her, I want to give it to her, but then she's not a human and it's just going to bother me. It's going to bother me. And we'll, I'll just let consensus rule the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. And you guys can, uh, rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you pod. Um, please do it. Tell your friends, reviews, all that stuff. It uh, it makes a difference. Subscriptions make a difference. Um, and we love you all. And thanks for listening. Yeah. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Bye.